In our morning rounds, the safety risks in products to help teething babies handle the pain. In a new study released this morning, researchers tested 59 plastic baby teethers. They found all of them had potentially harmful substances. For example, they all had the chemical BPA, even the ones labeled BPA-free or non-toxic. Our Dr. Tara Narula is here. Good morning. Good morning, Nora. I was stunned to hear about this story because BPA has been banned from bottles and sippy cups, but apparently not teethers. Right, so despite the ban, despite the popularity of these with a lot of parents in America, in fact, there's been surprisingly little research done on this. And so in this study, researchers took 59 different teethers on the U.S. market, 23 different brands, solid, gel-filled, water-filled, and they found they, that there was essentially a range of 26 different types of chemicals of concern that leaked out of these teethers, including BPA, which, as you mentioned, even though they were all labeled BPA-free and many of them non-toxic, they, in fact, had these low levels of chemicals, but still concerned that babies are absorbing these. Well, you've got a baby in the house, so what did you think when you heard this? I was Number not happy one. because yeah, I have think? about four different types of teethers in my freezer, which I will now be getting rid of. I was going to say, what people do? <laughs> so the, they the, don't the, name brands. No, they don't. Yeah. Um, the experts that we spoke to suggested just avoid these teethers in general and really use more homeopathic, homegrown remedies like, like a frozen washcloth, a carrot, a frozen bagel, a frozen waffle. Um, there are some teethers made of wood or natural organic cotton that can be used as well. Yeah, the so, frozen bagel is always a, a good one, a frozen bagel. Excuse me. Yeah. So BPA, what does BPA do if it gets into a child's system? Well, the concern with a lot of these chemicals, we call them endocrine, endocrine disruptors. That means that they mimic or disrupt the naturally occurring hormones in the body, things like estrogen. Mm -hmm. androgens, thyroid hormones. So the concern is that they can cause neurologic, developmental, and reproductive effects in growing infants. So is it only in growing infants and not in adolescents or adults? I don't think we really know the answer to that question. As far as what we do know, the FDA reviewed 300 studies in 2014, and they say that BPA in our current supply that we get from our food packaging is safe. Um, but we really don't have a lot of great research. We don't have a lot of studies, especially on infants and, and adolescents. So I think the, the jury's still out on this. I like the frozen ego suggestion. Yeah, go my ego because you can't go wrong with that. I never thought of a frozen <laughs> waffle and a carrot. You're not worried about them biting and choking on it. Well, I mean, I was... if it's frozen and it's hard, they can't really oh, okay. get it a lot. But yes, you okay. always have to worry about choking risks. Got it. And what about pacifiers? So pacifiers, most of them are made of silicone, mm -hmm. which is not a concern with a lot of these chemicals, but some of them do have plastic housings or casings, yeah. and that certainly could leach out um, or the chemicals could migrate out from that. So how do you know? if something is BPA-free yeah. that you're they're putting in your baby's mouth? I don't think you really do because all of these were labeled BPA-free. And I think some of the experts we spoke to, the researchers said even the bottles and the sippy cups that are labeled BPA-free, we probably really need to be doing more investigating on that. Which is why you're throwing all of yours out. I'm throwing my teethers out, oh, not my bottles. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank I need you. those. Yeah, thank you, Tara.